fun about it. Yeah. Thank you, John. Well, the culinary world is dealing with the shocking loss of celebrity chef Michael Chiarello. The Food Network star died over the weekend after an acute allergic reaction that sent him into anaphylactic shock. Chiarello had his own show that aired for 10 seasons on the Food Network and was featured on hit series like Top Chef, Chopped, The Next Iron Chef, and others. He also operated several restaurants in San Francisco and Napa Valley. He was 61 years old. A spokesman person for Chiarello's restaurant group says family and doctors don't know what caused his allergic reaction and maybe they never will but it's bringing up conversations about food allergies and allergic reactions in general. So let's bring in Dr. Salil Bandari, emergency room doctor with UT Health Houston and Memorial Herman joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you. So uh, the reports are that the chef died from an acute allergic reaction that led to anaphylactic shock. Could you explain what that means? Yeah, and I think this is causes a lot of confusion, a lot of the terminology. So let me just explain that briefly that I think of allergic reactions almost in like three stages of severity. Like when you first have an allergic reaction, if it's like a mild one, sometimes you may just get some hives or almost like red welts on your skin or some itching and, and that's what I usually call an acute allergic reaction. If it progresses even further from that and you begin to get your airway starts to swell and you can't breathe or you start to vomit because your intestines are swelling, that's usually called anaphylaxis at that point. And then the final stage is when the allergic reaction affects your blood vessels and as a result of that, your blood pressure starts to drop and you're not getting enough blood to your vital organs. That is called anaphylactic shock. So it's allergic reaction and then you have anaphylaxis and then you have anaphylactic shock. Mm. What's so scary, I feel like, in this situation? It seems like a lot of times we hear when this happens, it's somebody with perhaps a peanut allergy and they know to keep their EpiPen on them, which, which can help save their life immediately. But what about in a case like this where obviously it sounds like they weren't expecting this? What, what would you do in that situation for somebody besides call 911? Yeah, so in that in that case, if you are around someone who has an allergic reaction or you're having an allergic reaction, so one of the first things you can do is you can take some Benadryl, um, also called diphenhydramine, right? So that is a medication that we use in the ER oftentimes is one of the first medications that we give to help stop the allergic reaction from happening. So taking a, a tablet of Benadryl immediately stops that. And if you start to feel like you can't breathe and uh, things are getting worse, definitely, without a doubt, call 911 and get to the ER. And if you are prescribed an EpiPen, uh, which is a, an injector of epinephrine that you're supposed to inject in your, in your thigh when you have really severe allergic reactions and you start to feel difficulty breathing, then by all means, take that. If you are someone who is prescribed an EpiPen, that is something that should go with you wherever you go, mm -hmm. right? You should not be leaving it at home because you never know when you're going to have an allergic reaction, just as in this case as well. Uh, it, it's sometimes hard to know and hard to predict which ones will be bad, which ones will be mild. Uh, you don't really know. And a lot of, I think the biggest misconception that happens that a lot of people think that, oh, I've only had mild reactions in the past, so it's probably only going to be mild if I get another reaction. And mm -hmm. the truth is, never know which one is going to be all of a sudden really severe. People can develop allergies even later in life that they didn't have uh, before earlier when they were even younger. So well, it's something that we all really be aware of and, and watch mm -hmm. out for. Well, I think a lot of us, when we saw this story, we automatically thought about food. But what other things can trigger these types of reactions? No, that's a great question. I think definitely food is one of the big ones, especially for kids and things like that, but also medications uh, you can have allergic reactions to, and it may be a medication you've never had before that you're taking for the first time. The other thing that we also think about a lot is insect bites, like bee stings and other insects. All of a sudden, if you get bit, you can start to have an allergic reaction, even though you've never had allergic reactions uh, in the past. And then I guess sometimes you also see latex allergies too, um, which is common in the ER. Are and, and things like that, we come across that. But I'd say medications and insect bites and food are probably three of the most common causes of allergic reactions. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Salil Bandari, for filling us in on, on what may have happened. We'll be waiting for more information on this as well. Thank yeah, you. For sure. Thanks for your time from UT Health, Houston, and Memorial Herman.